Hi everyone, Melissa here. Today I am redoing my Builder Gel Nails. Um, and I've been getting quite a few questions lately, people asking um, how I do my shape or what my shape is called. The one that I've been pretty much stuck on for the past year. I'm in love with it. Um, but I realized looking through my videos that I don't actually have a video just on shaping um, my, like the way my nails are shaped, my shape. I have a almond shaping video and I have a shaping video for like shorter coffin style shaped nails, but not for my nails. So I figured this was a great opportunity to go ahead and go over that. Um, I'm also going to be using a new product from Double Dipped. It is a Hema Free Clear Builder Gel Blue Glow. So it does glow um, blue. So. That'll be fun. I've not used it, so we'll find out how it applies together. But I'm going to go ahead and get started on uh, the application. I'm just going to go over the steps for um, prepping the nail, just in case you have not seen one of my Builder Gel videos before. If you need more in-depth instruction on applying Builder Gel the way that I do, um, I do have a couple videos. I have one that was my first time trying it and then I've done an updated one. So you can take a look for one of those or um, my wonderful husband when he edits this can put a link here. I'm gonna go ahead. I like to just gently buff uh, the nail, especially right around the cuticle area. I've already prepped the cuticles. So I uh, took a cuticle pusher and um, you know, pushed, push the cuticles back, uh, dry. I don't ever use any kind of cuticle remover or anything. Um, I like to do it all dry because I find that cuticle removers cause me to have lifting. So this is my preferred method. I just kind of scrape the extra cuticle, the hidden, the invisible cuticle away, away with the cuticle scraper do a light buffing and then use a dehydrator this is a prep bond by double dipped um, it might be called prep it might be called bond it might be called dehydrator the main way to know if it is a dehydrator is if it goes onto the nail looks wet and then you can see it drying out the nail it doesn't dry shiny at all and then I like to use a primer, um, a gel primer. It just makes the nail so that it um, it's ready for the gel to adhere to it. And this one will dry more shiny. Okay, then I'm going to do my gel base. And then we can get into the applying the um, builder gel. Okay, now this here is one of my quick and easy shaping tricks. This, these dual forms help with nail shaping so much. So if you want that tapered square kind of look, this gives that nice shape um, to the nail and really helps minimize the amount of hand filing shaping that you actually have to do because this helps so much so much with the shaping so I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the sizes that I use so I already know which sizes I use I'm gonna go ahead and just put these on um, I've got this cute new lamp I haven't used it yet so let's see how it works hopefully see if this makes um, putting these on a little bit easier instead of trying to get into that big lamp that I have. Okay, I like the consistency of this builder gel. It's thicker than just the regular Hema Free, um, but that could be because of the glow pigment that's in it. But I like it because it, it's not runny. I mean, it stays in place. 
and um, so I just put a nice thin layer on there and I don't even fill it up to the top because I know that I'm not going to go higher than that. I have pretty long nail beds so um, I already know that like my nail is going to come up to here. I'm not trying to make them super long, I'm doing about medium length. Okay, got all those on. Now we're just gonna pop these forms off. And we're done. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so, um, so yes, yeah, so I didn't fill the forms all the way to the top. However, when you put it on and the uh, builder gel starts to kind of puddle underneath. Um, I use the brush to kind of like brush it out so it doesn't puddle underneath the nail um, and that does end up filling it the rest of the way. So these are the full length of the forms right now. We're going to figure out just how short we want to cut then. First I know I have some spots where the builder gel kind of snuck out on the sides um, so I'm gonna kind of clip those off okay now I'm just gonna kind of figure out how long I want these um, and give them a little clip um, a little bit longer than I want them to be so that I can file it down When I'm clipping, I don't know if you notice, I'm kind of clipping at an upward angle just slightly because I find that if something like cracks or chips, it'll chip upwards instead of chipping downwards and making it where I have to make them even shorter than I wanted them to be, so. All right, now I'm just going to straight file. One of the most important things about this shape is a nice flat shape at the end nice and straight right here okay and then the straight line um, on the for the side of the nail kind of comes down at a slight angle from about where the nail is is coming out of the uh, skin where it's growing out to the tip it does curve just a bit going towards the cuticle but part of this shape is just kind of that clean look coming out um, along the side just all the way from where the nails growing out hopefully that makes sense to people like it does inside of my brain Okay, so here's the shape um, before dipping. So I just finished shaping the rest of them out the same way I did this one. Um, filed around the edges just to make the builder gel smooth on the nail. Um, and buffed the nail out. I'd say the, the main difference between like this shape or um, and a standard kind of coffin or ballerina shape is that the... Uh, the angling in starts um, here and is just a, a consistent slight angle in from up here to the tip and it doesn't go super super skinny um, it looks skinnier at the tip because I have really long nails so that's just how it comes out on me um, but for a traditional coffin you would usually start um, angling in closer to here and angling in at a little bit uh, to a, th a thinner point. And that usually would be on longer nails too. These are just kind of medium length nails, so I feel like this tapered look just works better on medium length nails because to get them really thin, you have to go at such an extreme angle to get a nice, like, skinny um, coffined point. 
I really like how the kind of tapered look is, how it, how it looks. So there it is without any color on it. Um, how you file it after applying the powder or applying product to it is just as important as how you file it when you first make the shape on your nail. So I'm just going to throw a quick color on so that we can go over filing. I do have another video going over filing, so I know this can be a little bit redundant, but this is specifically about keeping this particular shape. So hopefully you don't mind me repeating myself sometimes. I'm going to be using uh, Sparkling Code DP45 Delicate. I have looked at this color for years and years and thought it was absolutely gorgeous on people and no, I've never worn it before. Never worn it. So <laughs> today is the day. Okay, so um, these are activated. They're, I'd say they're nice and dry. Um, you can already tell, you can tell just by looking at them, they've lost a little bit of their, like the crispness of the shape. Not a lot because this powder went on really smoothly, um, but just little parts are like bumps here and it's not quite a straight line. There's like a, you can easily get kind of like a lumpiness along the side of the nail, but that can be fixed just with filing. So we're gonna file the dip powder just the way we filed the nail to get the shape in the first place. So pretty much just a straight line from where the nail starts coming out of uh, the cuticle line to the tip. Kind of just straighten that out. And I am going just a little around the curve there too. And then, yeah, definitely keep that tip, that end of the nail nice and straight and sharp. But I'm filing along all that side part of the nail. And then around the cuticle. Okay, and then once I have the shape all the way around squared up, so like all the way around. So we have, it's just kind of coming straight in, straight in on this side. It just goes around a nice curve. It's a nice smooth curve and then nice and sharp at the end. Um, I'm just gonna grab a larger file and just gonna kind of smooth out the top. This is a 180, I believe, grit. Okay, now I'm just going to activate and top coat them. Let's finish them up.
All right, and there you go. I hope that this um, answers questions for anybody who had them about this particular kind of nail shape. Um, what I would call probably tapered square or like a short ballerina, but um, I think it looks really good for medium length nails. Uh, it's really a nice shape, but yeah. There you go. Let me know what you think. If you have a favorite nail shape you would like me to try, also please let me know. I kind of want to do like a uh, go crazy with builder gel and try five different shapes on one hand type of day. Um, so that may be coming up and we'll see. Maybe I'll find something else I like. But until then, I will see you later. <laughs>